Holy Town, of course, Chair, to help companies grow. Uh, this fund, of course, will help ambitious companies to do things like buy new equipment, develop new software, expand their premises and develop new businesses. The idea is that businesses can use these flexible loans to grow and then progress to banks once their project has been completed. The loans will accept higher risks than the banks would accept, of course. And we will use Lep Growth Company and a professional fund advisor to manage this fund. I think, Chair, it is a useful addition to, to our, our offer to businesses as a set of staff. Thanks, Chair. Any questions? Steve? Just, just, a, just a few comments just about this one as well, uh, Chair. I think the uncertainty in our current business climate around Brexit, just generally with businesses looking to invest, I think it's the decision making process of, of what's going to happen. I think this will help to accelerate that, the flexible growth, it will help businesses to make that decision to say, actually, we are going to make this investment to take things forward. I think this, among with the other two funds, is, is a massive change for our industry. I think it's the biggest one we've seen in many, many years. And I think, you know, taking forward and realising the potential the city region has got through inward investment, through business growth and stimulus and driving the city region forward, this fund is about these three funds combined together. Um, and I think each one of them sits alongside each other will help to drive some of the region's job and our economy, economic prosperity forward. So, well done on putting together the room has been involved. I know it's took a, a long, long time to get it here, but I highly recommend three of these projects. And I just reinforce on behalf of the leaders when we spoke before, um, the officers who've put a lot of time and effort and energy into to come up with these also need to be commended. Um, can we agree the recommendations set out on page 317, please? 14, um, continuing the Council of Hackett Show, is our final report which seeks approval to establish an intensive business scale up support programme for create small and medium sized businesses in the city region. That's what happened. But back last year, another good news story of following on what we've got from the city centre to realise the city region and helping businesses grow. Um, this is our final SIF submission of the day. Um, uh, we've got a lot of money involved here as well. Uh, the scale up programme is about helping uh, tech enabled businesses grow. <coughs> These businesses can be found, of course, all over our city. Region from Southport to Birkenhead to Dalesbury. Uh, our, aim, our aim is to, is to take around 180 businesses through a networking and growth program and to create an innovative platform for the creative and digital sector in our city region. An external program manager, uh, our external program manager, should I say, has an excellent track record uh, in other cities and we want to build. <coughs> on that here. I recommend this program and encourage the team to launch it as soon as possible. Thank you. Any questions for Pat? See. I haven't got much to say except so I'm part of the double line, so I have to say something on this chair thank you. And what a double act you are. Um, in regard to what we've just agreed, or we have got both agree this last um, item but you have to look at that as a, an overall package. It's about £75 million pounds of inward investment, of loans, of grants, of scale-ups, of economic growth in the Liverpool City region. And that can only surely be good in, in the current climate, but even if we were in a, a, a growth climate anyway, to do that so our businesses hopefully can start taking advantage of any prevailing winds that may come on the back uh, that might be positive. Let's look at the positives or the opportunities um, of a post-Brexit Britain. Then we, we will be geared up and we're certainly more resilient. And that business support, um, I'm bringing that forward, will create those opportunities. We haven't really teased out all of the jobs that will be created, all of the apprenticeships that will be created, all of those businesses that will be saved and those businesses that we will help to nurture around the city region and of course the new businesses that we will attract into the city region following this announcement and several previous ones with some of the other stuff that we've got in the pipeline around uh, what we're going to do on digital and what we're going to do on uh, low carbon and our basic tidal uh, project etc so 
it's a fantastic package of inter uh, intervent interventions sorry, um, that demonstrates exactly why the brave decision was taken by the six then leaders in the Liverpool City region to go for a devolution package. It would not happen if we didn't have those powers and that additional resource. So um, I think this, as was said twice, is a real good news story. Um, can we therefore agree the recommendations that set out on page 381, please? Chair, can I just Chair, can I just make a quick note? Can I just quick make a quick note to say that all of this sits on top of the new let combined authority growth company, the growth, the growth platform as it's called, and will be managed both through that growth platform and through the local growth hubs that are in each of our local authorities. So not only is it a new set of business, a new set of programmes for, for economic growth, but also simplification of how we've done this previously. So the idea is that it makes much more sense to business and it's the products they want. And just to add to the ad, and I know we've going to come in, but the one way you take about inclusivity, this genuinely is about inclusive growth, not just across the business community, but across the six local authority boundaries and ministers of boundaries. And I see. Yeah, just to reiterate what Mark said, I think one of the biggest questions we had, and I think this goes back to many people sat in the room here, when, when we started down the route of evolution, combined authority, we had a very, very cluttered landscape here in our city region where we have a numerous number of organisations doing various business support here, a bit of this here, and actually we had to change to drive our city region economy forward, we had to change. So I commend the whole initiative of actually creating the single growth company which will help to drive our strategic plans more forward, but working alongside all the leaders and all the organisations based around here. But I think having the ability to have what I would class as that a single point of contact to help evolve, to be able to do things and drive things forward quickly, efficiently, and, and openly in a very transparent way as well with all the regions, is one of the, I think, one of the greatest achievements which we've achieved in a business strategic driving forward for our city region. So it's a great initiative. Well done to Mark and his team and to the Mayor and all the leaders <coughs> who have been able to agree this and drive this forward. I think this is the big game changer we've been looking for, so well done to all. Yeah, and if I could just throw in a, a group who was seldom recognised, um, not by themselves it must be said, but sometimes by us in this chamber, uh, which is the chief executives who are driving this agenda forward and, and certainly helping the fact that we've got six sometimes disparate um, local authorities and um, council um, directions and pulling it together into one coherent voice which is paying dividends not just for individual businesses but as I say for the economic wellbeing City region, so um, it's refreshing um, to look at where we started and where we are uh, today. Um, okay, just before we go to public question time, which we, we actually haven't got any public questions, so if you'll just indulge me, um, there is uh, one last issue that we, we didn't touch on, which is around Thomas Cook, and we should have mentioned, I should have mentioned it at the beginning. So we are in dialogue with governments around what we can do with. Um, the problems uh, are faced by former employees at Thomas Cook and some of what we've just announced will hopefully be helpful to um, those businesses that take up the cudgels in regard to um, uh, offering alternatives to what Thomas Cook used to uh, provide. So um, that was just as an aside to what the, the business of the, uh, the agenda uh, has for us this evening. Thank you, Chair. Just to comment on that, uh, I was involved, so I'm, I sit on the National Task Force and the Thomas Cook. So um, I, was, I, was down at num um, I was down with uh, Andrea Ledson last week uh, talking about the National Task Force. We had a follow up meeting on Wednesday, actually, in, in, in Manchester as well, to follow up where we have looked at the uh, number of people affected in our city region and how we're driving forward. There's a, a large Employment fair as well a week last a week on Saturday sorry a week last Saturday in our city region there was a, a large fair in Manchester as well where a number of our region businesses went and helped to um, participate and put stands up there is a further follow up meeting next week in uh, Peterborough I think which is going to be but we will we will try and report back or I'll try and report back via the combined authority to exactly how many people are affected and you know what we're looking to do to redeploy and so forth. So. Thanks, Steve. Um, 
six, 15 is public questions handled, which I've, I've said that there aren't any that have been submitted. 16 is petitions and statements. Also, we haven't had any petitions or statements that have been submitted within the requisite time scale. Um, and 17 are the minutes of the Transport Committee, which is held on the 18th of July. And we have just for noting, uh, if they could be noted. Therefore, the next meeting of the Combined Authority will take place on Friday the 1st of November 2019 at 1 o'clock. Uh, and I thank you for your attendance and declare this meeting closed.